We've been seeing for the past few weeks from the book of Acts how the early church was because many have their own ideas about the church and if you're not careful to look at the word of God then we will become a social club having our own doctrines our own ideologies and the Bible even tells some even have the doctrine of demons because you go to test the spirits and know who's speaking to us and who's sharing with us the things that we know and as we live in these last days for the things that Jesus prophesied and said would happen before his return are taking place in all the earth the entire world is affected and all this proves that the word of God is true and we need to rise up and be the church at this time we got to base our life and base the church on the word not what we think not what others say not what others recommend many would come and give their own suggestions their own ideas but we've got to listen to God and see whether what we heard is truly from God by referring and checking with the Bible with the scriptures then we will not be left behind then we will not be ashamed one day when we meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on his judgment throne he will be able to tell us faithful servant enter into eternal rest that I've prepared for you we've got to always look at the scriptures and find out from it pray and ask God to show us the things that we must do and ask God to speak to us as we read his word the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2 that is the glory of God to conceal a matter but the glory of Kings is to search out a matter the Bible has been given to us expecting hostile jamming God has driven us the things that will take place but the enemies of God also have a look at it the devil knows all that is written but he cannot understand because he does not have the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to understand what God is saying the chapters and the verses were added hardly 600 years ago when the apostles the prophets wrote the different books and the epistles they did not have chapters and verses in it and if you see without the chapters and the verses there's hardly any structure in the Bible and even the books that are arranged are not chronological they're not arranged in any particular order that's why many people get confused but you have the Holy Spirit and God has given Bible teachers with the anointing so that your eyes of understanding would be opened not unanointed unbaptized unborn again Bible college theologians who are spiritually dead who just look at this as a textbook but if you see the council the Pharisees and the Sadducees were amazed looking at how the Apostles who are trained by Jesus were able to speak with boldness it says in Acts chapter 4 verse 30 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men they marveled and they realized that had been with Jesus so all that is needed is for us to be sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him and then our eyes would be open then you'll do all that is important and needed in our life but we need to search out what the scriptures are revealing to us for you are the kings and the priests of the last days you might say the book of Proverbs is written for the kings of Israel that is why it's written there saying the glory of God is to conceal a matter he's hidden secrets of the universe secrets for humanity secrets of the kingdom mysteries of the gospel in his word but with the anointing of God when we search it out when we ask and we read the Bible the Spirit of God will speak to you he'll speak to us and he'll reveal to us you are the kings of the last days first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 the Bible says you are a chosen generation 
And what is the next word? Everyone who knows, shout out and say a royal. One more time, a royal. A holy nation. His own special people that he may proclaim the praises of whom who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is why he's called you to proclaim his praises. That who once were not a people but are now a people of God who have not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Jesus is the one who's building the church and he's speaking to each and every one of you. Many misunderstand church to be an organization. That's where the first problem starts. The word church now makes many people think many things. They look at a building they think a church has a steeple and it has a cross and it has a crucifix inside and some might even think that there are idols inside and maybe incense burning or candles burning but what does the bible say what does the word church mean in matthew chapter 16 verse 18 when jesus for the very first time introduced the word church what did he say it was in greek that the bible was written the churches ecclesia which means the called out ones each and every one of you are the ones who are called out of darkness into light as we read in first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 the church is not a building church is not an organization though we have to register according to the law of the land whether we meet here whether we meet under a tree those who are called by God as they join together with the chosen vessel of God we become the body of Christ and therefore you cannot say that someone has got to do something I'm just attending you are an integral important part in the kingdom of God and the church of Jesus Christ each and every one of you are very important what you say what you do is what affects the church you got to stand together and work together in unity maintaining the oneness right from the front to the back to the left to the right and everything that we do we're going to be together then God will be able to use us because we live in these dark days Isaiah chapter 60 the promise and the word that God gave us in 2019 before the world was hit with this virus he told in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 what did he say anyone remembers that that first verse shout out and say with all your strength I think I do even more better. Shout out, arise and shine. For these are the days for the church to rise up and shine. For you are the light and the glory of God is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen hallelujah and have you seen the glory of god in your life have you seen the light of christ in the last three years that he's blessed you that he's prospered you that he's kept you safe that he's given you good health and peace and joy if he has why don't you clap your hands and thank and praise him and testify of his goodness this morning so you've got to know what the church is he used a word which the roman citizens would understand for as the Roman Empire spread out to different nations as they conquered many places, the citizens of Rome would go and dwell in the different cities and towns and countries. And at a particular time, those who are the citizens are the ones who will be called out for a special meeting. They'll come together and meet the leader, the governor, someone like the pilot, and they are the ones who will decide what is happening in that particular city and what they should do, what are the laws. They will come and give the recommendation they will come and make the laws and say these are the things that are taking place therefore tell Caesar and therefore you governor make the decision come up with a law we need all these things to happen in this city in this nation and Jesus is telling you he is the king of all kings and he's calling each and every one of you every Sunday we gather here and every service when we gather here you are called to the presence of God so they can come here and offer praise they can come here and offer your prayers and intercede Pray in the Holy Spirit, then you come and tell unto God in official fashion and manner to the king who is seated on the throne, the judge who judges in righteousness. This is what I face in the world. This is what is happening in the world. A formal request is made, a formal 
suggestion is made oh god save the people oh lord this nation needs to be saved there is deception there is lies there is no truth the devil is trying to bring in a stop to the gospel being preached bring in a stop to the people accepting you with freedom and liberty the devil is trying to bring in a threat but we rise up with your power will break every opposition for nothing is impossible for you with your power you will oh lord build your church and the gates of hades will not prevail against it how many believe that amen without faith you got to come to god and god will change the direction of this nation he will ensure that darkness does not rule but that light shines that is why we got to see how the church was because the very first church shook the world they say that 50% of the people in jerusalem became the disciples of christ we are here 2000 years in this city how many been reached with the love of god how many are the disciples of christ are we sleeping are we slow are we lethargic are we complacent are we lazy to get up and stand up and fight and press in and press on so that many would be added to the kingdom of god let us look at the church that is what we did the past few weeks reading chapter by chapter each and every one of us together and from all these chapters this morning i wanted to remind you all that we saw the important things the 28 principles for you the church it is not for some organization not for some full time called out appointed and chosen ordained ministers of god alone we saw in the bible that everyone wherever they went they shared the good news yes or not how many believe that how many remember that everyone wherever they went and so as we are coming to the end of this book of the acts of the apostles the last two chapters are the one which you got to read hopefully by today after we look at everything but i wanted to share with you what we already saw so that it will be a reminder so that we will adopt it so that we will do it so that we will shine the light in this dark world that we'll be able to stop multitudes from going to hell and set them on a path to heaven how many want to do that how many want to witness witness unto jesus christ this morning i know you all sat down now if you want to be a witness why don't you stand up just for a second and clap your hands and then you can sit down say oh lord here i am in your house i stand up use me as a witness oh in this world in these last days oh yes you can be seated thank you so let us look as quickly as we can these 28 points principles for the church for each and every one of you first is you are the witness acts chapter 1 verse 8 jesus said you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me you're witnessing that jesus christ is god that he is lord to the people of the world always remember that you are a witness shout out and say i am a witness for Jesus Christ the second thing we can see in the second chapter is that it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved you got to let the world know the ease in which they can get saved you don't have to climb a mountain you don't have to go travel across the world to the other side and dip yourself in a particular river nor do you have to roll yourself on the ground or beat yourself and bleed and put yourself through various tortures there is no penance there is nothing that we can do to save ourselves but trust in god and in his grace and by faith call on the name of the lord jesus and then we will be saved and you got to let the world know that all you have to do is just call on the lord jesus say you are my god you are my savior how simple how easy it is you don't have to pay any money if god said you got to pay money then how much can we give for salvation nothing in this world can ever purchase salvation even if you give the entire universe and all the material world all the gold and the silver it will not be enough for the precious blood of jesus to cleanse us the world needs to know that wherever you go you got to let them know all you have to do brother sister to save yourself from going to hell is say lord jesus i'm your lord I, i'm your disciple i'm your follower i will live for you and as they make that prayer you've got to be ready to lead them 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing we can see in the ch third chapter in the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse it says, Let men know that God wants to bless everyone. He's saying to you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus Christ, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. The people have a wrong impression. It's a lie of the devil and the people who do not know the Bible who never read it. But they've got their opinions and suggestions about the church, about Jesus, about Christians, but they never read it. No one will write a review about a book on the earth and tell about it if they've not read it. The first thing anyone would ask is, have you first read that book? You're talking about it. But there are so many Christians, unfortunately, who never read the Bible from cover to cover. From Genesis to, to Revelation, but they've got many ideas about how the church should be, what should happen in the church. And they come and they will criticize, they will come and they will judge all their brothers and sisters without having read it even once. And that is why the world does not know the truth. But the truth is God wants to bless each and everyone on earth. God doesn't want to curse anyone. God doesn't want to punish anyone. He is not hating humanity. He doesn't hate the world. The Bible says God so loved the world. He created the world with love. Whatever God does, he does it with love. For God is love. He created each and every one of you with love. Just like how you would take care of your own son or daughter, someone close to you. You would do all that you can so that you take care of them and you do it with love. And God created the entire world, not just human beings with love, but everything that is there in the world. He created with love so that you'd be blessed by it. And when sin entered, sin released the devil and the kingdom of darkness. That is how we have sickness and disease and death. God's plan is not for anyone to die. God is not a God who kills. God is a God who gives life. It was the devil who came and brought in death. And that is why Jesus came and he died so that all of us who die can live again. Hallelujah. What an amazing God we have. And he wants to bless everyone and all the earth. Tell the people of the world. Go on, tell. God wants to bless you. That is the truth. Just go and tell people sitting against you, opposite to you in a bus or as you travel in your office. Tell them, brother, God wants to bless you. That's his will, that is planned for your life. That is the truth. What is God's will? God's will is to bless everyone. Why don't we repeat that and say that aloud? What is God's will? Everybody, what is God's will? Ask the question. God's will is, is to bless everyone. When Jesus can give salvation and hope, to be in paradise with him to that criminal who was hanging on the cross. He didn't even criticize him. He didn't tell him what sin you committed. You're expecting me to remember you when I come in glory. What will they think about me if you are there with me? He didn't ask him to repeat all the sins that you've done and confess it. He didn't condemn him at that time. He gave him assurance. He said, assuredly you will be with me in paradise. That's how loving, that's how good our God is. Let all the world know that. The fourth thing we can see in the fourth chapter, there is so much, you've got to read the entire book. It's limitless. So this is just looking at 28 because of the lack of time and we're just looking at just one verse. And even in that verse, there's so much of depth. We're just looking at just one particular point in that maybe we can take one principle out of it. But you've got to read it on a regular basis so that we can be the church that shines. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which men must be saved. Except the name of Jesus. Let the world know that he's the only way. There are many confused, especially in this nation when Jesus lived on earth. John chapter 14. Thomas is the one who asked him, Lord, show us the way. And to Thomas is the one that Jesus spoke that word and told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
no one comes to the father except through me in see Acts chapter John chapter 14 verse 5 Thomas said to him Lord we don't know where you are going and how can we know the way and to him Jesus answered and said in John chapter 14 verse 6 I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me why did he tell that to Thomas because he knew he had a wonderful plan for Thomas that Thomas would come all the way from Jerusalem Israel right down to India where they say there are 33 billion or infinite number of what is the word they say gods with a small g but you know what those small g gods are they're not the real big g gods they're the lies which are deceiving people multiple ways every town every village every state follows on particular religion and do have their own particular customs and they think they're going to get saved and there are cities and places dedicated and mountains and rivers which are given the name holy every cow seems to be more important than human beings in this nation because the lie of the devil can deceive people that is why he told Thomas specifically he knew that he would come here so that he will carry this message and this news that Jesus is the only way the only truth and the only life there is no salvation in any other name and with all love and with all patience with all humility let us tell the people of the world that Jesus is the only way the only truth and the only life I come here and I shout with boldness that there is only one way and everything else is a lie but when I see someone who's yet to accept the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not gonna tell him and condemn him and say you're on the path to hell you're following a lie you better turn all that you're following and worshiping is I don't want to use any words but you can know things that we can say about them but when we speak to them you got to speak with all love with all humility with all patience that the love of God and the power of God would touch them the fifth thing you can see in the book of Acts is that they believed in it so much that they filled the world with the truth that the leaders there who did not believe and accept Jesus Christ they first threatened the apostles and the disciples saying you will not speak about Jesus not teach about him but what did they do they continued and so we can see in Acts chapter 5 verse 28 they again came and asked him did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name and look you fill Jerusalem with your doctrine are we the church which has filled this city and this nation with the teaching of Jesus Christ we got to rise up to that level where we fill this place everyone in this city should hear the name of Jesus everyone in this nation should hear the gospel that is our aim that is the goal for the church of Jesus Christ everyone somehow through some means should know that by just calling on the name of the Lord Jesus that they can be saved what are the efforts what are the things that we're doing so that will take place how focused are we how dedicated and committed are we many think oh let church the organization do it oh put it on YouTube put it on all the channels put it on all the social media let that be the evangelist we'll just come and attend we'll give you all the offering and the tithe if you want we might not even come we'll send it through somebody just give us a certificate for water baptism certificate for membership and then on that day just come and be the one to give the last rites church is nothing but a rubber stamp for many people I'll do this I'll do that you just come and put your stamp say a prayer I'm gonna get married come and say a prayer and go what does it say a prayer that's not even right the way we say it but here they believed in the Lord and they were the church that spoke about Jesus and Phil now we have so many ways of announcing the name of Jesus and proclaiming the name of Jesus but let us not wait for some other technology to come and let the world know about Jesus Christ we want each and every one of you to be the ones who share the good news to be the ones who make mention of Jesus 
who make the decision saying we will obey God rather than men under the threat of imprisonment and death what do they reply in verse 29 it says we ought to obey God rather than men the six we can see is Acts chapter 6 verse 7 it says then the word of God spread first they filled it and that was not enough they did not stop they did not say oh everyone knows about it they themselves have said so let's now relax kick off our shoes and settle down and enjoy the life that God has given us it says in Acts chapter 6 verse 7 the word of God spread it means the King James Version says the word of God increased the English Standard Version says that the word of God continued to increase we cannot rest and say oh we've done a little bit we've done it here we've done it there once a year we have an outreach or once in a few years we do this for the Lord that's enough no we've got to increase it because new people are coming into the city into the nation new people are being born in different situations different circumstances as you keep sharing the good news it will definitely open their eyes let the word of God increase why don't we shout out and say let the word of God increase the seventh thing we can see is that the church is a tabernacle of witness you got to bring them to the house of God and say come and see the power of God come and be delivered come and be healed Acts 7 verse 44 it says our fathers are the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen but where have each and every one of you come this morning where have each and every one of you come this morning Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 to 24 it says where you have come this morning and where you're seated but you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven not having a membership on earth it is very easy getting a card and paying maybe a weekly or a monthly membership fee is your name registered in heaven that is the biggest question to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect to Jesus the mediator of the first covenant of the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel is this place that you've come a tabernacle of witness as they come here as they stand here their eyes would be open their hearts will understand that which was cloudy that which was confusing them will leave them because when they come to the house of God as they set foot here their eyes will be open and God will speak to them so it is your duty and responsibility to bring all the people that you meet into the house of God into the tabernacle of witness into the church of witness and God and the Holy Spirit will do his work for we cannot save anyone with our own strength with our own talent or skill or ability to speak what is not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of God the eighth thing we can see in Acts chapter 8 it says let everyone everywhere hear the truth they did not stop there was a persecution that rose against the church immediately they did not shut down they did not stop preaching the gospel it says that though they were scattered it rose in Jerusalem and they got scattered they ran out of that city for their lives but what did they do they did not keep silent after that it says that they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria and verse 8 it says therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word you've got to stir yourself up and preach the word of God wherever you go share and be a witness many will say oh I'm not ready who am I what am I I do not know the Bible much I'm not an expert in the word or in the scriptures each and every one of you are born ready all of you are born again almost all of you 
there's anyone who's not born again definitely it'll be a pleasure and a privilege to lead to the Lord Jesus Christ so when you are born into the kingdom of God you are ready that's what happened in the life of Apostle Paul Acts chapter 9 verse 20 it says immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God immediately he did not say okay I'll go to the Bible college and spend a few years and then after that I will come back and I will start preaching immediately he was able to share all you need is to say Jesus is the way Jesus is the truth what opened your eyes what made you accept Jesus Christ how were you born again that is more than enough tap someone next to you and say you were born ready to witness don't wait for another day don't wait for another season don't wait for another time witness now the 10th thing you can see in the book of Acts is that though the angel went to that first Gentile centurion's house he told him what he must do to Cornelius the angel said go and get Peter and he will come and tell you what you must do in Acts chapter 10 verse 6 the angel could have himself told about Jesus Christ but he did not he gave Peter that privilege each and every one of you have been given that privilege to share the gospel more than even angels God wants to give you that honor you've got to accept it and receive it you've got to know that this wonderful opportunity is given for each and every one of you that you're esteemed higher than angels and you will be able to lead people to the Lord Jesus Christ isn't that awesome and wonderful God could have just said all the angels you go and share the good news this humanity is mankind the children of Adam they have failed me time and time again they did not obey me they did not keep my word but you angels have been true to me for eternity from the time you were created so you go and share the good news he did not do that and the angels are loved the church the disciples and the apostles will be the one to share the good news but they help in the gospel they will bring people they will tell people they are speaking they are working along with the church and we will see an increased presence of the angels of God working in these last days along with the disciples and the apostles of Jesus Christ they're already at work in the church and in the world helping those who preach the gospel to be able to lead multitudes into the kingdom of God and we got to recognize that and we got to accept that and then we will work together along with the Holy Spirit and then there will be a mighty harvest a mighty awakening a great awakening the 11th thing we can see is that the book of Acts tells in the 11th chapter that they preach Jesus Christ to everyone there were certain who went and preached the word to the Jews only in Acts chapter 11 verse 19 but there were some men from Cyprus and Cyrene in Acts chapter 11 verse 20 it says who when they had come to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists preaching the Lord Jesus and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord we should not make that mistake of just focusing on some people we've got to reach out to every group everywhere do not think what will this person say or what will that person say they look very rich they look very well made they look fine they don't look like they will receive the Lord they look very intelligent they're very learned who am I to go and share the church is not called just to go to slums and preach the gospel standing there you're called to preach the gospel from every place in the world the highest place to the lowest place and God will open the door and leaders of the world heads of nations 
leaders of industries they are hungry they will be touched and their eyes will be opened by the power of god preach jesus to every group exclude none the 12th we can see in chapter 12 is witnessing is not just for a season when herod killed james and then he sees peter and put him in prison there are many things that are happening imagine an apostle of the church being killed and then the next one is put in prison and they were all praying they would have been shaken up they would have been highly disturbed when all these things took place but they did not reduce their intensity in sharing the word in fact they grew and multiplied acts chapter 12 verse 24 says but though it was written saying james was killed and peter was thrown in the prison and herod was intending evil but the word of god grew and multiplied how does the word of god do it doesn't say the church grew and multiplied it doesn't say the disciples grew and multiplied it says the word of god grew and multiplied it means that they spoke more they shared more they witnessed more than ever before the devil's tactics the threats of the devil did not shut their mouth they spoke even more louder you got to speak even more louder you got to make that decision and the choice saying lord i will witness more in all your life how many have you led to the lord jesus christ because one day when we go to heaven we cannot stand before the lord and say i am come alone i was too busy too occupied I was thinking only about myself. I have a job and that's enough. I have a family, I have a wife, I have children and that is more than enough. Let us look beyond that. For the things that we see are temporal, but the things which we do not see are eternal. For this world and all that is there will one day be no more. For God will burn it with fire and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. Let us be people who lead multitudes under the Lord Jesus Christ so that they will be able to tell for all of eternity, thank you for sharing the good news with me. Thank you for opening my eyes. Oh, how many hundreds and thousands we need to need to the Lord. How wonderful and marvelous that is. For the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. You are the light of the world. Acts chapter 13 verse 47 the Lord Jesus Christ says, I've set you as a light to the Gentiles. That you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Jesus is the Savior, but you are the ones who reveal that Jesus is the light of the world. But he told each and every one of you, you are the light of the world. You've got to shine that light. I don't know if you've ever gone and traveled somewhere, but we hear so many times, especially maybe in a train or in a plane as people travel suddenly some of them get a heart attack or they have a seizure or they collapse and at that time without hesitation among the passengers if there is a doctor they get up and they go and help that person who's struggling and suffering yes or no do you think that doctor should do it in that plane or in that train or maybe on the road as he's walking he sees someone struggling for life or struggling with some sickness do you think he should get up and go and try to revive that person yes or no but how can we as the church the light and the salt be silent when we see people suffering especially now with the social media and everyone putting comments if they get to know some doctor was there in that same plane when someone suffered and died and the doctor was just not bothered what will happen all they say but we are there among and the midst of people who are on the path to hell but are we the light Jesus has said I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth you got to witness boldly that is why we pray in the Spirit of God that is why in this season we want the anointing and the power of God to increase because you cannot have the ability to witness without the supernatural boldness that 
the Holy Spirit alone can give not the mental strength not the physical strength we can do it only through the Spirit of God because everyone who is unsaved are under the control of the devil and evil spirits are operating and working in their lives a lot of them might be in under addiction and bondage of different spirits and as you share the good news as you look at them the devil will know this fellow is going to now open the mouth and share Jesus so immediately you will be hit with fear immediately you'll be hit with a threatening feeling from that evil spirit and how to counteract that you can do that only through the power of the Holy Spirit and that's how they witness Acts chapter 14 it says therefore they stayed there a long time speaking boldly in the Lord and who was bearing witness to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands do not be shy do not be timid in sharing the gospel do not be afraid and do not apologize for being a Christian at any time do not be squirming and feeling very uncomfortable you got to rise up in boldness you know the truth you have the treasure which is the most precious in all the earth you are right the entire world which has no Jesus is wrong but they're thinking they're right you have an advantage you have God working with you how many men or evil spirits they have doesn't matter even the devil itself is inside of them it doesn't matter greater is he who's in you than he that is in the world so fill yourself with the power of God and go and preach with boldness and witness with boldness and as you witness as they accept the Lord Jesus Christ as they're born again they're like a baby Christian don't forget them after that don't have a baby and leave the baby somewhere and walk away you don't have a baby and leave the baby in the hospital and come back home you got to take care of the baby especially in the initial stages almost 24 hours the mother is with the baby losing the sleep and taking care completely when someone accepts the Lord Jesus Christ it says in Acts chapter 15 verse 36 that Paul and said to Barnabas let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing he brought someone to the Lord Jesus Christ he brought them to the house of God he brought them and they made the salvation prayer and they're born again do not stop there make them a disciple of Jesus Christ let them be baptized in water let them be baptized in the Holy Spirit how long it takes till they come to the point of becoming a disciple that they can stand on their own two feet and they're following the Lord faithfully you take care of them amen amen do not just let them be follow upon them help them do not throw them into the world and let the devil trick them and let the cares of the world and the pleasures of riches choke them like thorns the seed of the world that was planted in them let it bear fruit as it takes root you got to water with the word of God water with the anointing and the presence of God the 16th thing we can see in Acts chapter 16 is your personal walk with the Lord is a witness by itself when people see how you're walking with the Lord how you pray how you praise will someone who's never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ walk into the church and look at you praising the way you sing your song and will they be motivated to accept the Lord Jesus Christ or they see you sitting down and just and you tell them accept the Lord Jesus Christ like even you yourself are not interested looks like you're just following a lie you just come here and many people even make statements about others and they're like oh another service another Sunday morning oh pastor's just going on it looks like it's 10 o'clock two hours I've been here he's saying come half an hour early and he's saying clap and he's singing and singing and singing he's saying shout out If we speak like that out of our body language and our attitude is like that how can we allow how can we lead others to the Lord look at Paul and Silas as they're thrown in prison they're beaten with rods they were bleeding 
Their feet were put on stocks and they, right in the inner prison they were laid there. But what did they do in the middle of the night? They were praying and praising and singing hymns to the Lord and the prisoners were listening to them. That brought about a change in that prison. So much so that the foundation was broken and the chains alone came off. The building didn't fall on them and kill it. It's a supernatural act of God. It was not a natural occurrence. Science cannot explain it. Science need not try to explain it. I don't want any scientist to come and give me any. I don't want to use a stupid explanation. It is a supernatural divine hand of God at work there. It is a miracle. We cannot explain it through science. But because they prayed and they sang praises to God, the prisoners though, they were all free, the doors were open, none of them ran out. That when the jailer wanted to kill himself and commit suicide, Paul shouted and said, do not kill yourself, we are all here. How is that possible? Tell me in which prison you open all the doors, loosen all the chains, all the gates and the doors open, none of the prisoners run out. You know, you put barbed wire and high walls and electric fences, they somehow find some way to escape all over the world in different prisons. Because they were touched by the love of God, the presence of God, the peace of God, as Paul and Silas praised God and worshipped God and prayed there, they could feel something different that they never felt. All the hatred, their anger, all the spirit of violence left them. And immediately, without even preaching, the jailer came and said unto Paul and Silas, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Paul didn't preach and tell him, Oh, you've got to accept. He came of his own accord. How did he come to that conclusion that these are the vessels of God, these are the men of God, they know the way to salvation because he could see the prisoners' lives were changed. They were not ready to murder him. They looked different. Their eyes and their gaze upon the jailer was different. He was not threatened by them anymore. That is why immediately he came and said, what must I do to be saved? Let your praise, your worship, your prayer, your walk with the Lord. Show the zeal you have, the fire you have, the passion you have. That they'll know that it is a truth and you completely believe it. And you'll give your life for it. Not just a half-hearted effort. Because we need to turn the world right side up. 17th we see that they were accused of being those who have turned the world upside down. That they've come here too. Are we changing anything in this city? Do they even notice us? Do we come in all the important headlines? Are we dead or are we alive? 18th chapter it says that we need not be and should not be afraid Jesus Christ is the one who spoke to Paul by vision in the night saying do not be afraid but speak and do not be silent each and every one of you need to be speaking and not be silent 19th we can see that you got to reason and persuade with a vision you see a Acts chapter 19 verse 8 that he went into the synagogue Paul and he spoke boldly for three months reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom and he would not give up when there was opposition in the synagogue what did he do he went to the school of tyrannus and he withdrew the disciples and those who accepted the lord jesus christ and he reasoned daily with them in verse 9 acts chapter 19 acts chapter 19 verse 10 it says and he continued for two years and all who dwelt in asia heard the word of the lord jesus christ both jews and greeks all what a target for us what a challenge for us how are we sharing continuing for two years reasoning and persuading is your witnessing reasoning and persuading others or you just lightly give up just make a statement you should come to church should accept Jesus. very afraid and shy and scared and they say what why okay okay don't come don't come He was persuasive. Why? Because he had a vision. He knew what was happening. 
Do you have a vision? Do you have a target in your life? What do you want to do for the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you want to bring at least one person to the Lord Jesus Christ? Here in the month of May, end of May 2022, by 2023, how many can say 100% I will bring one person to the Lord Jesus Christ? They'll be sitting next to me. If you had asked Paul, in one year, can he bring at least one person to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you think he would have said yes? Or he'll say, I don't know who. Yes or no? How many think Paul could have brought at least one person in one year's time? Anybody here? Don't look at the ceiling and count the tiles or... How many can lift up your hand and say, Paul would have brought at least one person in one year's time to the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes or no? All got your hands folded and I think it's stuck in a straight jacket. If he can do it, maybe he has four arms, I think, or maybe four legs or maybe he has six eyes. He's got something special, different from us. He has a different Bible, brother. He has a different spirit. How many here can say by one year's time, 2023, may I can say with all conviction and all boldness that I will be somebody who will be sitting next to me who I would have brought to the Lord Jesus Christ and to his church. Is there anybody here who can say that? Let that be your target. Lift it up fully. Be bold. God will give you the strength for the things which are impossible with us men are possible with God. For with God all things are possible depend on Him and He will use you. If just few of you are going to say that, then how can we reach the lost? You got to fill yourself with the Word of God. Make it life's aim to witness. That's what the 20th chapter says, but none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. When they told him that he's going to go to Jerusalem and then he'll be bound, they might kill him and chains and tribulation await me. He wasn't scared. He didn't change his plan. It was his life's aim to witness. How many here can say it will be my life's aim to witness the gospel? You got many goals. Oh yes, financial goals by 2023. How many want to double your salary? Put your hands up. Even for that you don't want. How want to cut your salary by 50%? All very safe. Jesus said, do not be silent but speak. You don't want to double your salary. I'll write it and give it to you. You'll double your salary if you put your hand up. Immediately everyone will put their hand up. How many want to have a house by next year? How many have another car? We might want all of that. So if saying this morning that you do not want to double your salary, that your salary is going to remain the same, 2023 May. Is that what you're confessing this morning in the house of God? Don't come next year in month of June 2023 and say, Pastor, no one gave me increment, no one gave me increase, no one recognized me in my workplace, I'm still working and slogging. I'll tell you, you didn't lift up your hands. Yes. Very silent. Some are looking for stones. That's why we clear the place. We check every service after the end to remove all the stones or things that are there. See where we got ourselves into our mind and our body and we ourselves are not working towards what the word of God reveals and what the church was and what the church is now. He says in verse 8 in Acts chapter 21, ready to die for the Lord. Not just make it his life same. He says in verse 13 Acts chapter 21, for I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. It might seem very strange to die for the gospel, die for witnessing. How many are ready to die for the gospel? He was ready. Isn't that how we follow the Lord Jesus who said in Luke chapter 9 verse 23 onwards, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross daily and follow me. 
Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For who is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. The 22nd chapter says, we need to be ready with our defense for the faith. When people come and ask you, I heard you become a Christian, I heard you go to church, I heard you pray. You got to tell them, I can't come on a Sunday morning, I got to go to church. And your boss will come and say, oh, you're going to church, we are all working. Say, you got to at once say, you want me to go to hell or you want me to go to heaven? You make me work here, you and also go to hell and you'll be punished by my God for separating me from worshipping my God. Can we be with boldness like Daniel? Open the doors. Even there is a law to be thrown in the lion's den. Or it is only for Daniel. It's not for any of us. I just came this morning to church to sit down. I thought you'd let me sleep. The 23rd chapter says witness and get to witness more when you witness you win that first person to the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus will be very happy Paul spoke to the council in Jerusalem and Jesus comes to him in Acts chapter 23 verse 11 and tells be of good cheer because God himself is of good cheer and tells Paul for as you have testified of me for me in Jerusalem so you must also bear witness at Rome because he testified in Jerusalem, God now gives him an opportunity to go to that prime city, the head of the empire, and even be able to witness to Caesar himself and the household of Caesar, and many of them got saved. When you witness to someone, God will open doors for more. Witness and get to witness more. The 24th chapter says you've got to get contagious. That was the accusation that they placed on Paul saying that this man is a plague a creator in Acts chapter 24 verse 5 a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes are you contagious that wherever you go people accept the Lord Jesus Christ what a wonderful state that is I want to get contagious how many want to have the virus of the gospel that wherever you go at least few people get saved that they cannot stop him that they cannot contain him that they agitated they irritated they so upset that they want to kill him immediately because wherever he goes they chase him from city to city town to town and country to country wherever he's going it's like as if they're chasing he's only making him go to a new place and get more people saved then they come there and they start up a problem and send him out and again he's going somewhere else again more people are getting saved they're completely irritated with him is the devil irritated with us are you in the hit list of the devil or he's like ah, these Christians let them go to church they are nothing no threat let them go and come they can't do anything they don't do anything Have you ever faced the devil any evil darkness in your light, in your life? For standing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Have anyone accused you and falsely said things about you? Trying to hurt you because you stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. The 25th thing we can see in Acts chapter 25. That you got to present Christ resurrected in verse 19. Paul affirmed to be alive. That is central to our Christianity. If Christ is not risen then our preaching is empty first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14 it says your faith is also empty but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep the 26th thing we can see is every one of you are to become a persuasive witness that's how Paul was Acts chapter 26 verse 29 it says I would to God that not only you but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am do not think it is only for Paul that all this is there 
or just for some apostles or some evangelists what is the bible saying read acts chapter 26 verse 29 i would to god that not only you but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as i am except for these chains that's his desire he wants the entire church not this entire church he's speaking to unbelievers there and he's telling them that even telling agrippa the king because agrippa looked at him and said you almost persuade to persuade me to become a christian that's how he was talking and so response to that that he gives that reply the 26 27 is your prayer for the salvation will be heard you got to pray for the people you got to ask god and place him when we all stand up as you look at the last point for paul prayed for all those who were there in the ship with him and god heard his prayer and the angel was sent and the angel comes and tells him in acts chapter 27 verse 24 god has granted to you all those who sail with you when you pray for the people god will hear they were criminals he was in a ship full of condemned criminals who were bound with chains who would want to save them who would want them to live but god answered the prayer of apostle paul that he sent an angel and said god has granted to you all those who sail with you because paul had concern for everyone he didn't say oh lord save me alone all these are criminals and murderers and thieves they deserve death let the ship ship get sunk let me alone come to heaven he had concern for every one of them do you have concern for the people in your life in your workplace in your family for your relatives for your neighbors maybe you do not have the boldness right now to share the gospel go and preach with them but at least you can pray in that secret place by yourself and as you pray god will open the door and it was granted at the end of the chapter in see acts chapter 21 verse 44 that they all escaped safely to land all because of the prayer of paul they all escaped god didn't let one of them die if you pray for your relatives your family members it is god's will and plan that not one of them should go to hell and perish there not one in your workplace should go to hell and perish there not one of your neighbors should go to hell and perish there not one of your family members or relatives are supposed to go to hell and perish there god's plan is for every one of them he hears your prayer and he will ensure that they all get saved but are you praying for them all the earth will hear the gospel know that that is the word of god all the earth will hear the gospel that's what acts chapter 28 verse 28 it said therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of god has been sent to the gentiles and they will hear it the world will hear it but will you have a part in it is the question god is looking for people whom he can use who can be a witness for him tell him lord do not pass me by let me be the one shape me mold me i will follow you jesus for he said follow me and i will make you fishers of men i will make you fishers of men all you have to do is heal yourself and say here i am O oh lord each and every day open my mouth give me the boldness open my ears let me hear your voice take me to that place let this situation be created let this atmosphere change so it'll be conducive for me to share and witness in this place let this brother let this sister open up to me let them come and ask me and i will share the good news and he will do it jesus says in matthew chapter 24 verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the earth as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come so it will be preached it will happen some might not have the faith in the church itself saying oh gospel preached to everyone is it possible but it is possible it will hundred percent happen but this morning even as you close your eyes you make the decision saying lord here i am use me in this great movement use me in this great awakening let me have something i want to lead 100 people i want to lead a thousand people to you oh lord i want to be a mighty witness let this be my life's aim 
What is the aim of your life? To make money, to get fame, to have pleasure, to get recognition? Is being a witness even a part of it? Or you just want to scrape your way and somehow land in heaven? Oh Lord, give us the burden as a church to reach the lost. Let us be a witness to the world that will shine the light. That will be the salt of the earth. Touch each and everyone here. Stir their hearts. If God has spoken to you, if you want to be a witness, if you want to say, oh Lord, use me in this great awakening. Use me to reach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lift up your hands at this time. Say, here I am. Oh Lord, use me. I give myself. I give my body, my spirit, my soul. I give my life. I give my mouth. I give my feet. I give my hands into your hands. Oh Lord, use me. Oh Lord, even as they lift up their hands, you said, Oh Lord Jesus, you gave your words that follow me and I will make you. We do not have the ability, they might not have the ability, the boldness and the skill and the talent or the personality or the things that are needed, but we know that you can make it all happen. Let it happen that by the end of, Oh Lord, a year's time, 2023, May, that they'll be able to bring at least one person minimum to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That no one in their life would go to hell. We pray for all of them. Pray for every one of the unsafe family members, unsafe relatives, unsafe classmates, unsafe co-workers, unsafe neighbors. Oh Lord, we lift them up all to you. Oh, we cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, make us, shape us, mold us, fill us. And use us. That all that we saw in the book of Acts, the Lord, would come true. That we rise up to that level to be that church. Not just have a form of godliness, but having no power. Not just doing church a little bit, but that we will be the real church, O oh Lord. That you'll be pleased with us. That one way, when we meet you face to face as a church, that you will... Be happy that you died for us, that you shed your blood for us, that you walked into our life and blessed us. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, give you all the honor, give you all the power, give you all the praise. In your wonderful, mighty, matchless name, Lord Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Why don't we clap our hands and give God the praise, give God the glory. Oh, we lift you up, we exalt you.